Hello everybody, this is Josh Placer from GameWisdom.com. Welcome to a video of Spotly of Axe, Bow, and Staff. This is an indie game that I got a press copy for. It's a very interesting take on old school games and runner gameplay, but I think the controls may be a little too crazy for this type of design, but we'll see that in a few minutes. The game is basically a tongue-in-cheek story. Evil is taken over and you have to save the day. And your team basically consists of these three people, Axe, Bow, and Staff, or as we all know, Warrior, Ranger, Wizard. The developers talk about how the game is takes inspiration from both uh, two very interesting classic games, The Lost Vikings and Adventure Island, and they couldn't be further apart from each other. The Lost Vikings was a puzzle platformer where you controlled three different characters with differing abilities, while Adventure Island was really what we could consider the precursor to modern day runners. It was a platformer where you essentially couldn't stop moving, and it was also very difficult for the time. So Axpo and Staff combines both. We're going to be running through stages, but we have three characters to play through. I'm going to skip these first four levels, I think, because they don't really count. They, they basically separate the three heroes. And my issues with the game really don't start until we get all three on the same track. We'll look at the shop and the upgrade when we're done with this. But here's our three heroes. Now the game has essentially three characters you can play with, and you'll be switching between the three at any time. And I assume if you play online, you'll have you can have up to three players at the same time, which I think is where the game is at its best, but we'll see that now. The rules are pretty straightforward. We're going to be moving forward, always, as in a runner case. Each character has two abilities, and everyone talks through like little images. So this is when they're going to meet up. So the person who's in the front is the one whose commands will actually go into effect. Axe can bash objects and fight and block. Staff can heal the group from like negative effects and can move things. So the challenge of the game is that you're not just controlling the three characters, you also have to control their position. So you use left and right trigger. I think that's a bug. <laughs> As you can see, it's controlling who I'm leading. And whoever's in front is the one who's going to do commands. But I can also switch characters like so. So the challenge of the game, again, is that you're basically having to control these multiple characters at the same time. Now, if we were playing with other players, they would control these as well. And we have these sections, they all split up. And the AI is actually really quite good. They, it knows to perform the right actions, it knows to dodge, stuff like that. So, as you can see. The problem, though, is that in the heat of the moment, it becomes very tricky to control multiple characters. As you can see, move them around as well as their position. Now in this section, it's not too bad. But you'll see what happens once we get back to a one-lane, three people in a group situation. There are checkpoints per level. Let's get rid of that guy. And the wizard's probably the trickiest character to play with. Again, I am free to control them however I see. Oop, I don't know what happened there. You can see I didn't want to do anything. But this is where things get a little bit tricky, when you have to control these characters and move them into different positions at the same time. 
While the AI is good at performing basic commands, it's not good when you're trying to do something more complicated. And you will see that when we get to the end of this level. So again, if I want to move that guy back, what I need to do... Now here's another case. If you're trying to move... You now, when you're on the bomb, you can actually go straight from top to bottom, like so. But you saw that the warrior, oh, and even the wizard's having some trouble there when you get to advanced commands. And the issue is, first I have to switch to the character, and now I have to reposition. And of course, you have the checkpoint that guy came back. When you're trying to, again, perform like two or three tasks at the same time, it becomes a little bit complicated trying to move people around. And you'll see that in this boss fight. So what happened... ...is he's gonna start targeting Kagura with that super rat attack. I'm gonna move him up here. But it's not just about moving them, you also have to... Make sure that whoever you want to make commands be in the front position. And when you're playing as just one player, it can become very cumbersome to do that in rapid succession. I would almost suggest, it, if you're playing single player, that whoever you're controlling should just be in position one. When you're playing with two or three other people, it's not too bad. Now characters will level up, and then you unlock new abilities when they hit certain tasks up here. Or, I'm sorry, certain experience points. And then we can also buy new stuff, and it gives a pretty good sense of meta progression. So, let's we'll see if we can buy. Let's see. So, everyone has their own accessory. So I think I'm going to buy that. I assume as we play further in, we'll get more stuff. We don't need that. And the game does do a good job of this kind of progression. But in this level, as we get now that everyone's been officially added to this party, we'll see some of this difficulty. Here's the point. If she was in the front, there would be no other way to hit that switch. So let's watch this. You can see sort of the problem there. So I have to switch to the right guy and perform the right action while making sure he's in the front. And so it's kind of like this amount of actions that are required by the player that can make the game a little bit frustrating to play. Little speed ups. Oh, and because he lost, he'll be dead until we can come back. And because the AI can sometimes take priority like that, it can also become difficult trying to organize and make sure you're using the right character. See? So he'll come back. So this is where things can get a little bit tricky. Again, the character took priority. Those items are there by pressing Y. Like right there, when I want to push up, I would want him to just immediately take over. Like the character, when you're single player, should basically be given priority, I think, just to make it easier to control. This would be a case where we have to basically 
want to hit everything, we need to get everyone onto a, their own lawn. Adjusting, as you can see. Uh oh. I'm not sure what happened there. Again, once things get a little out of control, it just becomes very hard to really process what's going on because you are effectively controlling three characters at once. And I should say three different characters at once. I can definitely see this game working in a multiplayer setting. But single player wise, it is a little frustrating to again having all these different things getting in the way. Like as you can see right there. If I hit the checkpoint, again I have to manually adjust this. Oh, get back there, you. When that hits, well, if you get your speed high enough, you actually get a super speed boost. There we go, turbo mode. <laughs> this may last until the end of the level. Or pretty far in. Oh, nope. But again, playing as one person, the controls are just a little too cumbersome for one person to basically do it all themselves. But I could see this game really shining if you get two other people, or maybe even just one other person to play with. The stars I assume were for achievement, achievement purposes. And you can see there's quite a lot of levels here. So maybe this time I already bought all their basic stuff. Hmm, that would be useful. Okay, so I'll buy this. So you can see there is a pretty in-depth system here. I wonder if it's... I assume you can upgrade all accessories? Let's test that out, shall we? No, I guess they must only be weapon kind? Just buy all this up. So Axpo said it definitely isn't a bad game, but it definitely feels like this is a multiplayer game first, rather than single player. <laughs> so I think we'll play one more level and that will do it. Sometimes you get like that critical hit there. We must have picked up some food. So again, we wanted to defend against that. I would have to have move shield back in, or axe back into the front. So they should know to move down. Oh, hey. Gotta pick up these coins in order to get the best ranking. There it is again, like, it's annoying that I lose priority sometimes based on where I am in relation, as you can see. Hey. So we'll see about getting the speed boost. It 
almost feels like it's best to control um, staff, just to do how technical playing as him is. playing as him is. Because I have the upgrade moving characters around with him now does damage. But I do like this kind of elevated take on running, on um, on sort of the runner genre, and even on like that old school play. And again, if you have two players, or even or if you're really like ever three people to play this, there's just a lot of fun I bet to have with this. But again, the control system just doesn't seem all that suited for just one person. And you can see by our little progress bar at the top, we are coming to the end of this level. Still our gear. I got an achievement for that too. Well, I gave us a free accessory. Normally she can jump over our obstacles, but we'll try to keep her alive. The early stage of the game, we're definitely a little on the simple side. Once you get used to the controls, as you can see. I kind of wish that things would be a little bit more exciting. I can't speed things up unless I get the speed boost item. Right, there's the goal. Alright, so he's the first one to hit level 4, so we actually have two choices. So you can either make it so he'll automatically cast the spell, or after the spell someone's been dispelled, they become invulnerable. I think I like just automatic casting it, especially because of the fact that I am playing the single player. If I was multiplayer, I think it would be a different story. At the end of each area, there's of course going to be a boss fight. Yeah, not too bad. If you're a fan of running of the running genre, there is a lot here to enjoy, especially if you have multiple people to play with. I mean, <laughs> okay, and now she'll know to hit that. You can see characters are leveling up, and as a good uh, touch by a developer, your coins and your experience are not tied to basically a level. So I can replay levels to get more experience or more gold if need be. So that way, if you are having trouble with the game, you can uh, get around that. So here we go again. I need to organize. So. But again, you can see sort of the how difficult it can be to control this when you're one person. I'm basically one person doing the job of three right now. Oh, thanks. 
Thanks, wizard. The wizard is a jerk, I think. <laughs> oh no. And then you have cases like that when the there are times where the AI will kind of <laughs> lose control there. Sometimes you get locked into certain areas. As you can see. Okay, I have no idea why it wasn't letting me control that there. That was weird. It wasn't letting me, like, perform any commands. Can we get the turbo mode? There we go. But I think this will call it for this play. Alright, so they leveled up. But not enough for that. Oh wait, here we go. Poison or pierce through the target? I think pierce. Hmm, that's weird. Okay, new stuff, so we have potions. Hmm. Must have been a bug or something, because that says she leveled up. Alright, but I think that's going to do it for this play of Axe, Bow, and Staff. Again, if you're a fan of the runner genre, or have two or three friends who also enjoy it. I think this is a great game to pick up, but keep in mind it can be a little cumbersome to play with just one person. It's currently available, I believe, on Steam now. I can actually I think I can check the store page. Give me one second. Do do do. And we shall see. Yes, it's currently available. And it is on early access right now. So they're going to... They're trying to get a new game plus mode, multiplayer racing and versus, and expanding on the game. So yeah, if you like what you saw, be sure to check it out now while it's on early access, or when it's finished, which I think... They say they're looking for like a few months of it, but I'm not sure like, you know, if things have changed since they put that up. But well, anyway, thanks for watching this video spotlight. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a comment and of course like and subscribe to the channel. It always helps out. Check out game-wisdom.com where I examine the art and science of games. Follow me on Twitch and Twitter under GW Bicer for the latest updates of new content. And you can find me on Patreon under Game Wisdom. Animations would be greatly appreciated. They allow me to keep doing what I'm doing while supporting myself. If we can hit some goals, it will mean more content for you fine folks to enjoy. And we have some great rewards up there now. Thanks a lot for watching this video spotlight of Axe, Bow, and Staff. Once again, it is on Early Access. So that means that there is a chance that things you see here may not be indicative of the current version. But anyway, hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you all next time. Take care. <laughs>